How you doing today? Today is uh, March 25th. February, March 25th, 2018. How you doing? <laughs> My name is Marcus Conti. I am the sole plaintiff in Conti vs. DSNY. Broadcasting from New York City. So uh, today I was, you know, watching the, I was watching some of the stuff out at the, the, the rally, the big rally. The kids are rallying. The kids are protesting and protesting gun violence. Isn't it amazing how quickly um, that protest came together? It's like, like overnight, all of a sudden, it, it was, you know, organized, and there they were out in D.C. and all the cities across the country. Wow, really smart kids, right? Kids are really smart today. Right? They can organize like that, like nobody else. It's highly suspicious. You know, my my thoughts. <clears throat> it's not what I want to talk talk about. The cat is <laughs> t- cat tail hitting my microphone. The thing I wanted to talk about is not so much the Parkland uh, shooting, where seventeen kids allegedly were shot. Um, I don't know based on the evidence I I've looked at. You know, I've seen interviews of one particular interview stands out in my mind where a girl is walking down the hall with the alleged alleged shooter and has a conversation with him while shots are going off in the background. Now, th- this is this is evidence. It's evidence. Where is the where's the FBI investigating this evidence? There's also a, an incident where 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 apparently a teacher or somebody says that they they looked out the window and they saw a fully armored, armed, in full body armored guy shooting a gun outside of the window. But they found the kid, the alleged shooter, miles away in McDonald's without a trace of any of the equipment or the guns or anything. It just doesn't make sense. We have to stop listening to the propaganda. We have to we have to think critically again. Look at the evidence. The evidence doesn't support the, the situation, right? With Seth Rich, there's no body, there's no pictures, there's no, there's no testimony, there's no ballistic report, there's no hospital report, there's no autopsy, there's nothing, right? Well, we're expected to believe that on such, a, such and such a date, someone was shot dead in this spot. But what, what about the fact that he's a political adversary, that he's a political operative working inside of the DNC. Where's the, where's the, <laughs> you know, of course he was, of course it was a political hit, but, but, but why create a fake story? So that's not what I wanted to talk about today. I just want to talk about, um, not the omnibus bill either that, uh, Trump signed. That's just show uh, $1.3 trillion is going to get divvied up in the usual way. There's nothing, there's nothing new about that. That's not, that's politics as usual. <clears throat> but what, what I want to talk about is, again, is wealth and income inequality in America, that none of the things that we're seeing, you know, in politics, like, okay, so, so again, Parkland, they, you know, this false flag is created, and millions of kids head to the street and they're they're convinced that there's an enemy over there but it's not really the it's not the gun it's the they're trying to pin it on the Republican party it's the Democrats and the Republicans trying to frame each other as the villain which they're both the villain right so you have all that false flag shit going on but these are these are criminal acts that that's what I want to talk about that these 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 kinds of these kinds of manipulations that we're seeing at the highest level where people sit in a room and try to fabricate a story like like fake Russia, like like Russia, you know, hacked the election, hacked the DNC and and siphoned out that information that was incriminating to Hillary Clinton because they were talking about how they were cheating. Right. And that information was dumped to WikiLeaks, who's now been framed as a Russian spy, right? Look, the FBI in the United States of America is one of the most sophisticated organizations 
has some of the most high tech advanced techniques to detect fraud and abuse and and crimes they catch people like that right someone like for example when when the when the kook in new york the latest nut that uh, the islamic guy that took a truck and ran over people in the bike path in in, in manhattan lower manhattan that was real that was real you saw the bodies you had eyewitnesses NYPD converged on the scene. They blocked it off. We had, we, we had, it was real. And you saw the, you saw the crime unfold right before your eyes. You saw how the investigation led to the capturing of the guy. Within hours, they had him, right? Right? But with Parkland, it's, 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 it's not real. With Seth Rich, it's not real. There's no evidence to suggest that what they did, what actually happened, and what the official narrative is are two totally different things. And these are criminal acts. That's, that's what I want to I wanna talk about. The, the idea that um, election fraud in this country where uh, the Democratic Party can, can claim that they have a right to uh, steal $250 million from Bernie Sanders supporters and Oh, that's just, you know, we picked the candidate. No, but that's fraud. That's fraud at the highest level, right? Anything over $250 is considered, when you steal more than $250 from someone, that's considered grand larceny, right? And there's no crime, so, right? White collar crime, the HSBC, who was caught laundering billions of dollars for drug uh, cartels in Mexico, no crime. No, no, not a single banker was was uh, convicted, right? There's no crime, right, F to these guys, right? But, but what about so? Who are the the 250 million adults? Uh, uh, two hundred. Uh, yeah, two. I'm sorry. Two and a half million. <laughs> what did I say? Two hundred fifty million. Two and a half million adults in America are in jail. That's one in 100 adults are incarcerated the 14 the, the male the male population is 14 times larger than the female population right now you might say oh it's disproportionately ethnic it's mostly black wrong male blacks account for 35 percent of the prison population and white males 32 percent of the population so it's not really a race issue right it's right what other facts? So in, in total, one in 35 Americans are under correctional supervision. The United States has the highest population in the world, the highest prison population in the world. What's the cost? When you, when you tally judicial, police, and corrections, $250 billion a year. Repeat that. $250 billion a year are spent to incarcerate people in this country. Right? It's the highest prison population in the world. Right? Now, it's a business, right? right? The, the catering companies, the jail companies, the correction officers, the, the police, the, the, the judges. It's a, big, it's a big business, right? It's a huge business, right? So... You know, is it is it gun violence? Is it is it? Most of it is petty crime. Most of it is, you know, people who, you know, get a prescription for for their pills and then they they sell their pills to somebody else to get food to buy food, right? Because they don't have money, so they they can get a free prescription because they have health care. They have free health care, and they get their pills of fentanyl or Demerol, whatever the hell it is, Valium. And they sell it to somebody down the street, and then they, they're sitting in jail for two years at a cost of, I don't know, $30,000 a year to the taxpayer. Right? So half of, all, half of all prisoners are, are you know, casualties of the drug war. The, the, the point I'm trying to make is that this is not the way to go, right? We're, we're incarcerating addicted people, mentally ill people, you know, uh, poor, the the working poor, people who can't afford to 
bail themselves out or don't have the smarts to, to walk into the office and bail themselves out or, or get on the phone and have someone bail them out before court or, or a system that sets a bail just high enough so they can't get out. Right? So first of all, holding someone in jail while, they're, while there's pending bail is actually unconstitutional. But it, this, is, this is a broken system, right? It's like, look, I was, and how many of them are whistleblowers, right? So when I blew the whistle, right, on DSNY, and I'm, I'm putting this on the record, when I blew the whistle on DSNY, six months later I was walking around in my neighborhood, right? I was, I was walking around. I walked down the block. I went to the pizzeria. I sat in the park. I, I ate my slice <laughs> or whatever I was eating. I don't know. And then I walked back home, and uh, I was, you know, I'm reading a sign on the pole, like for a flea market or something, and police roll up on me, right? And, and, and they, they're, they're searching my pockets. They're like, the long story short, they kept saying, you matched the description. Were you just running down the block? Were you near that car? These are the things they were saying, right? I was like, no, I, I lived down the block. I showed them my license, right? And um, and and he handcuffed me, right? This the cops hand this one particular guy, police detective, I guess. I don't know, plain clothes. He showed me his badge and then he handcuffed me. And then suddenly, from out of nowhere, all these police cars appear, right? And you know, there must have been like like ten cops on the scene, like car, car, police car, unmarked car captain in white shirt i was like guys we, we, you guys got to be kidding me what the hell is going on here you know so why would they do something like that is that coincidental no i'm a whistleblower right so what do they do they don't have anything on me so what do they do they they pull you over see if maybe you have a pill on you that you're not supposed to have or a joint or some sort of bag of something that is contraband i don't i don't use drugs i haven't you know you know, anything like that. So that's a that's a swing and a miss. But they dig through your pockets in your underwear, grab your testicles, trying to find <laughs> find pills, you know, right? Take your belt off and, and take your shoes off. And then maybe you have a weapon on you because you're paranoid and you're afraid that something like this is gonna happen. Right? That's what the first that's what the Second Amendment is, is really about. The right to bear arms to prevent yourself from this very thing. This is tyranny. This is police state. There was no verifiable, justifiable reason to approach me or stop me, right? But they did, right? And so then I was handcuffed and, and uh, brought to the precinct and uh, and then there was, no, there was nothing. They, they, they tried to say that I, that I was littering, that I put the thing on the pole or something. It's, it's just bullshit, right? So I get this so I get the a court appearance and it was it was dismissed. There was there was nothing. There was no there was no pursuant of justice. So so but the point is that the reason why there's so many people in jail, I'll give another example. Like the guy in the kid who photographed or videotaped the, the police um apprehending uh Eric Garner. Gardner, whatever his name is, Garner, the 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 heavy black guy that got uh, tackled by the police in New York City for selling loose cigarettes, I can't breathe, and started the whole uh, Black Lives Matter thing, right? Uh, there's video, there's video footage of a guy standing in front of the, the, the in, in front of the store, and he videotaped the whole thing, right? So that kid, of all the people in the group, all the police and all the, all the uh, people there he's that kid wound up going to jail not not because he filmed the police but the police did what they did to me they follow you around they went through his pockets they 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 pinned him as a drug dealer he had drugs on him all right so what so drugs are almost legal in this country stop with the prosecution of addicted people he had a weapon on him it probably shouldn't bad idea in new york city poor judgment but the fact is, it's an illegal search. They're, you know, they, they're, they're targeting him. They targeted him because he filmed the police doing something wrong. Right? That's, what the, that's, 
That's what's happening. That's what this giant incarceration thing is. It's a big business. What's the motive? I just told you, $250 billion a year. And beyond that, it's a scare tactic. You know, do you want to get, do you want to get shaken down in your own neighborhood? Do you want to get, you know, cornered by the police and then, and then accused of something you didn't do? I don't think so. So, I'm going to do another random reading from Animal Farm. Yesterday I said it was uh, 1984, but <laughs> I'm reading from Animal Farm. I'm just going to do a, a random random page and then I'm going to read so I landed on a poem it says friends of fatherless fountain of happiness lord of swill bucket oh how my soul is on fire when I gaze at thee blah, 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 blah. Ah, this is boring <laughs> Napoleon approved of this poem and caused it to be inscribed on the wall of the big barn at the opposite end of the Seven Commandments. It was surmounted by a portrait of, of Napoleon in profile, executed by Squealer in white paint. Right? Meanwhile, through the agency of Wimper, Napoleon was engaged in complicated negotiations with Frederick and Pillington. The pile of timber was still unsold. Of the two, Frederick was the more anxious to get a hold of it but he would not offer a reasonable price. At the, at the same time, there were renewed rumors that Frederick and his men were plotting to attack Animal Farm and destroy the windmill. Right? If, if you, have to read, you have to read Animal Farm. Again, you can find the PDF online, but it's the story of, it's the story of a farmer named Jones who had animals, and the animals suddenly realized that they were, they were captivated. They were they were they were they were imprisoned by Jones, who was the owner of the farm, right? And then they they broke free of Jones, and the pigs were exalted to the you know to the to government, right? And all the things that the humans did to the animals, the pigs did to the remainder of the animals over time. So that's kind of what you're seeing right now is this this uh, Orwellian police state tyranny. It's not time. It's not exclusive to, oh, that was written back then and that's not how it works. No, it's, it's, it's very consistent with human nature. And uh, I think that's the thing that we have to, we have to uh, fight against, you know. Last thought, I, someone said, you know, Conti, you point out all the problems. You 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 point out all the all the all the corruption, and you 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 talk about you know election rigging and and uh, that the you know that the elections don't count, and that maybe Parkland was a false flag to you know power grab by the deep state. But what's the solution? What do we do about it? You know, and that's that's a valid that's a really valid question. And, you know, I, I don't have the answer to that. What I do know is that uh, for whatever reason, going in front of people and talking about it at the risk of being, I was called a conspiracy theory twice today on Facebook, right? So whatever, it doesn't, that does, that's not the point. The point is that when the evidence doesn't match the, the official narrative, whether it's coming through fake news on CNN or it's coming directly from the FBI in terms of an investigation into a, 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 a crime that allegedly happened. And the, the evidence in the public record doesn't match the official narrative. You must, you must stop and think critically. And you must declare it a false flag until proven otherwise. That's just the way it is, right? That's what we need to do. We need to we need to, to to keep speaking about it, keep joining together, not letting okay, people like me are not gonna we're not I'm not gonna go march out in the street, although I, I respect the, the kids for doing something that means something to them, but it's based on a false notion that that somehow it's the gun 
or the gun industry that's causing their death. It's just, it, it, it's just, it's a ludicrous way of connecting dots. Why don't, why aren't you protesting the, the, the pharmaceutical industry that kills millions and millions of people that, that is forcing vaccines on young people or forcing, you know, adolescent kids to take Ritalin and various other, quote, anti-psychotic drugs at a very young age, getting them hooked on medications. Why, why aren't you protesting there? Why aren't you protesting the fact that most, you know, colleges in the United States are going to hit you with a, you know, if you want to get a, an education, fifty hundred thousand dollar debt student loan? Why not protest that? Why not protest the the um, the obscene level of uh, income and and wealth inequality in the country, or the fact that there are for every congressman and senator there are twenty four lobbyists giving them money to persuade their view and shut your view down. Right? Those are some of the things that we need to protest rather than someone's Second Amendment right to, to bear arms and protect himself from the very tyrannies that we're talking about and the very tyrannies that were uh, written about in, in Animal Farm by George Orwell in 1946. So that's all for now. Peace out.